morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is a dining table refresh day. This oak table is a farmhouse table that my husband grew up eating around as a kid. It has had a fair few makeovers over the years. The last one being into our preferred Hampton style with the white legs and the wood top. But we're needing to take this wood top a little bit lighter to suit the hard flooring that we have chosen. It needs a good sandbag, it needs a new stain, I'd love to do a new centerpiece. And all of these things always end up taking way longer than you think they will. So let's get started. Luckily I was able to just wheel the table straight out the French doors and onto the deck to do the sanding. I didn't have to somehow get it to the garage. I used a hand sander with a 60 grit paper on it for the stubborn areas and an 80 grit on the softer and less heavily stained areas like the sides. The stain came off relatively easy, it was just a timely process. The whole table took about an hour and a half to completely sand back to bare. It was at this point that the weather looked like it might turn, so I wanted to bring it inside, especially while I left to grab some new stain. So I wiped the table down, and this is where I noticed that because we had always had a darker stain on the table, that when the bare wood was wet, it had this really orangey tinge to it that I was worried if I went for a lighter stain or a clear polyurethane, that it might came up, come up the same orange shade, and it's just not the look I was going for. So here's the flooring sample we have chosen. You can see that the bare wood almost exactly matches the sample plank. It just perhaps needs a slightly ashy effect to match perfectly. So this is where I had a complete change of mind from doing a stain and decided to do a liming white, but in the same stain and varnish combo that we've found so durable for this table throughout all its makeovers. All that was left was to lightly hand sand the edges of the table that I'd been worried about flattening with the hand sander and starting to think about getting a centerpiece completed. Hey everyone, I'm coming at you from the middle of another project right now. I'm in the garage doing some spray painting and I thought while I've got that spray paint out, I should jump in and get started on this next project as well. So when the dining table is complete, I would like to have a new centerpiece. And I've been seeing on Pinterest everywhere lately, and I'm very late to the bandwagon, where you mix baking powder in with acrylic paint and it kind of bubbles and fluffs up. And when painted onto things like vases, it can give the effect of like ceramic or like a textured concrete, and it looks really cool. I've got a couple of vases that we don't get a whole lot of use out of and saying that I did just have to chuck flowers out of this one in order to show you. I've got this really tall glass vase here. It's got a couple of chips at the top, which is why I got it for free from one of my old works. It has this waterline that I can just never clean about here. So I'm thinking I'm gonna tape it off just above that line and I'm gonna paint from there down and leave the top half glass. I also have this really cool milk can shaped vase and like a sea green, it just doesn't kind of match or go with my decor but I'm thinking in a nice crisp white with some lovely hydrangeas in it, it's really going to kind of suit my theme and decor. Now the problem is that craft paint or acrylic paint, I've actually got some test pots left over that I'm going to use today. Um, you know, it's not well known for sticking to glass, so while I'm in the garage spray painting, I'm going to give these a dust over and like almost a quick prime with the spray paint so that the acrylic paint has something to stick to. I'm going to give these a really, really fine sand first, give them a dusting with some spray paint, and then I'm going to come back at you um, and we'll get them painted. And I'm back, I've given them a very, very light dusting of a matte white spray paint. Paint will stick to paint, it's just that acrylic paint is not designed to stick to glass, so it just needs a little something, something to grip onto. I was thinking actually, the um, I use these things because this is what I had around at home already, but you could probably go straight in onto the glass, maybe with a little bit of a sand first with chalk paint instead, rather than doing a spray paint and then going in with your acrylic chalk paint could work. So this one I taped off the top as you can see. 
very fine dusting on that one and we're going to get into trying to make this baking powder paint. So I've got some test pots, I'll show you how's it go, I'm going to flip you around. Okay so I'm going to start off with just a white craft acrylic paint. Um, the recipe is about one cup of paint to one tablespoon of baking powder and you are supposed to kind of get it on your vase as soon as possible. I might want to do a couple of coats so I'm not going to I'm not going to take the whole tube out just yet. Okay, I'm supposed to get this on pretty quick. So, oh yeah, it is a bit textured. Okay, I want to go in with... Oh, okay. <laughs> it feels like I'm painting with a frothy shaving foam. This is going to need a few coats. Oh, okay. It's like foaming up even more in the container. Okay. Okay, well, I'll leave it at that for the first coat and I guess I'll move on to another colour for the larger bars. And I've got some test, um, test pots here that are from, uh, I don't know what to do with this vase now because I can't really move it, I can't stick my arm in it anymore because I've painted on the inside. Um, I've got some test pots here from uh, trialing paint colours for the new house so although some of these aren't the colours that we have gone with, of course they're all in the same like tones and hues so they're all going to kind of work into the house really nicely. <gasps> it's like turned to sand. Okay, I don't know if I put too much baking powder in, but this is like, it's just turned to mush. It's just turned to sand. I'll try adding a little bit more paint because I do have some more. Okay, so this is reacting completely differently to like this is more the kind of effect that I was after, like that concretey, that concretey textured kind of look. This is more what I was thinking from this project, and the house paint test pots have kind of they've gone way more textured than the craft paint. I might have to water this down because it is just like freezing on me. Okay, I've watered it down. It's come back to life. That's so weird. So there's bits at the top where I use the like the really um, sandy paint that had kind of set up on me. It's super textured. It's like a plaster and it looks quite thick. It's going to take a while to dry I think. Um, watering it down has definitely helped and it's still got that texture to it. Okay, I think this is the point where I just need to stop and leave it. So using that first paintbrush layer as a base, when I came in with my second coats, I instead used a crumpled up piece of Glad Wrap to dab the paint onto the vase surface and it creates a fantastic textured effect, like a really rough concrete, which is the look that I was personally going for. Super textured to the touch. I would say I definitely used too much baking powder in most of my paint mixes on this day. The more baking powder, the more textured the effect but too much and it will turn to sand and will just crumble like you saw. These definitely took overnight to fully dry, but I love the finished look. The craft paint definitely didn't give as much of an opaque or textured finish as the test pots, but if you're going for that super smooth ceramic kind of look, perhaps craft paint would be best. So back to the table now, to do the liming white I used a tiny 250ml tin of a stain and varnish combo in liming white. You can either brush or roll this on, I'm using a mini roller with a 4mm nap as suggested on the tin. And as you can see it just creates a milky effect, the perfect ashy finish to tone down that look of the oak uh, and to match the flooring sample. 
because I was working on a previously varnished piece I only needed two coats and was really happy with the coverage after two. You would otherwise need three or two with a clear top coat if you're using it on a new or bare piece of wood. So here she is in all her glory, her fourth makeover and still going strong. I can't even say how much I love how this turned out. The textured vases tie in so perfectly with the whole look. It's a very minimal, scandy kind of style that also suits our Hamptons theme to a T. Thanks so much for joining me for another home project. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you for the next one.